Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event, Houston. Conyers Middle School, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Dr. Samuel King at Conyers Middle. Do you hear me? Uh, Dr. King, we've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome. Thank you. Excellent. Again, we are in a position to introduce students at Conyers Middle to present questions for Expedition 24 of the International Space Station. My name is Jordan Dobson, and my question is, why are so many countries involved with the International Space Station? Well, uh, Jordan, that's a great question, and uh, the primary reason is we're an orbiting laboratory, and when you look out the windows, you don't see any borders around our globe, and so the science that we're doing and the things that we're exploring and trying to discover uh, while we're here in this orbiting laboratory really affects us all as a human race. And so uh, it's actually uh, uh, makes it for a better, more international uh, uh, place to get the full power of uh, all of our universities around the globe, all of our scientists, uh, to really uh, uh, set the pace for working together as an international partnership, uh, investigating these, uh, these things that, uh, uh, that plague us in, in the way of diseases and medical problems that we have on the planet, uh, to uh, looking out the window and taking pictures of our planet and learning how to better take care of it. My name is Hannah Neville, and my question is, how long do you train to become an astronaut on the ISS? Well, Hannah, we um, have all been training for a number of years. Um, some of us, uh, uh, anywhere from six to 12 years to, to, to do this job. But specifically for the mission that we're carrying out right now, it's um, about two years long. And um, that's uh, that includes all of the travel that we do around the world to the various control centers and training centers to learn all about the science and uh, also the systems on board uh, the various modules that make up the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Ryan, and how do you ride in space? Ryan, how we write in space? Well, honestly, most of the time I type on my laptop, but when I do actually have to write something down, I have a mechanical pencil that I use. My name is Savannah Wegmer, and my question is, how long does a mission on the ISS last? Well, that's a great question, Savannah, and our mission is going to be about six months long. Uh, Tracy was already here. Uh, she came up a couple months uh, before we got here, and then Shannon and I came up together in the middle of June. And our mission together will be about four months together, and then Tracy will go, uh, go back to the planet uh, sometime in late September, and then we'll stay on until, uh, until late November. And so these missions on the International Space Station are lasting about six months. Hello, my name is Braxton Pan. I'm from Boy Scout Troop 973. And my question is, what happens if an astronaut gets hurt or sick in space? Well, Braxton, each one of us is trained uh, to be what we call a crew medical officer. And we have uh, many hours where we um, have learned how to do certain procedures and diagnose problems and uh, also have trained in emergency rooms uh, around Houston uh, to uh, learn hands-on uh, how to uh, stitch people up, how to uh, um, give them uh, IVs, um, all sorts of things to, to fix them right up. But uh, our best resource are the flight surgeons who are uh, in mission control. And as long as we have communication with the ground, then we have uh, the experts on board with us. Hi, my name is Jacob Sam Martin. And my question is, what advice would you give to upcoming astronauts? 
Jacob, first and foremost, if you're interested in being an astronaut, then it's very important to do well in school and do well in the areas of math and science and technology because that are the skills that we need at NASA and that's what it takes to be an astronaut. Beyond that, once you're done with school, go find a job that you like. Um, I say that you don't need to do a particular job, but you need to be good at what you do and I find that most people who enjoy their work will be very good at what they do. Hi, my name is Daniel Long, and my question is, how does the ISS help society? Uh, Daniel, great, great question. And um, primarily in two ways. The way I look at this is uh, the way that the ISS helps society is, uh, is um, first of all, it helps us better take care of our planet. When we look out the windows, we have different cameras and things that we use to uh, do crew uh, Earth observations. And uh, we, can, uh, we can also take a look at land use and things like that to assist farmers in the use of, of uh, growing crops and things. So it helps us in a way to take care of our planet. And it also helps us in the way to take care of each other as well. We do a lot of, a lot of science up here that involves uh, medical experiments and things like that to try to make life better on Earth as well. So we hope, of course, to make that big discovery to, to, uh, to help cure uh, that disease that plagues us or whatever it might be. But we like to, uh, uh, we, we've been spending a lot of time with science, uh, developing new materials, uh, uh, better ways to grow, uh, grow crops, and also to, uh, uh, to find medical breakthroughs. Great question. Hello, my name is Cameron Smith, and my question is, how do you prepare for launch? Wow, it's hard to put that one in a nutshell because you prepare for launch um, in, uh, in many ways. Um, but the day of launch, you basically, um, you, you get up, you, you eat, you get dressed, you go to the bathroom, and, and then you get into the rocket. But there's a lot of work that gets done on the ground to prepare your rocket before uh, it actually takes off. You have to, um, uh, when you're launching on the Soyuz, which is what, what the three of us have launched on, uh, you actually um, do pressure checks in your suit and, act and, and actually get into your custom-fitted uh, uh, seat liner, which is very important that you fit in uh, with your suit pressurized. So you go through a lot of leak checks. Um, you uh, monitor all the systems on the rocket uh, that they're all ready to go. Um, and uh, you wait patiently for the uh, engines to light. Hello, my name is Carson Wallace. My question for you is, what mission are you currently working on on board the ISS? Hey, Carson. Uh, most of what I'm doing at the moment involves uh, scientific experiments. And so I've, I'm working with uh, folks on the ground to do a number of different experiments. Uh, I won't go into them all, but a lot of them, actually, I am using myself, or they are using, my, using me as a, as a test subject. And so I've got uh, nutrition studies going on. We're um, monitoring my heart, looking at how my heart works and my blood vessels to see how the body adapts and adapts to space and how it progresses progresses over time while you're in space. Hi, my name is Rena Lanuza and my question is how heavy are your spacesuits? Hi, Rena. That's a great question. Um, the spacesuits uh, that we wear when we go on a spacewalk are actually pretty heavy when you're on the Earth. They weigh about 300 pounds, a little more than 300 pounds. So they're pretty heavy. You, you wouldn't be able to stand up in one uh, if you put it on on the ground. Of course, when you're in space, uh, they're weightless and everything is floating around. Uh, there's one important factor you have to remember, though, that even though they're weightless, they still have mass. And so when you're moving around, when you're moving a large object around in space, you have to remember that you have to apply the same amount of force to stop that uh, big mass uh, that you did to, uh, to get it started. So you have to be very careful, but they're weightless in space, but on the Earth, they weigh about 300 pounds. My name is D.C. Ford. What kind of equipment do you use in, in the IS, ISS? 
Well, hey, Darren, we, um, we have a lot of equipment on board the ISS, actually. Everything from uh, television cameras to uh, monitors to computers to batteries to uh, lights to tools, uh, valves, pumps, uh, connectors, uh, hatches, hatch seals. Uh, we have an airlock. We have a bathroom. We have a galley. We have, what else do we use? We can go on and on and on, and there's, there's, that's only the equipment that we can actually see. We have um, scientific uh, equipment. We have uh, large doers that get the temperature of objects down to minus uh, 80, even minus 95 degrees. Um, we have, uh, we have probably, we have, we have suits for spacewalks. We have, we have a lot of equipment here. Hi, my name is Jada Jackson. My question is, what type of food and drink do you have on the space station? Well, Jada, we actually have a wide variety of food um, and, and drinks on the space station. I don't know if you can see it. Tracy's got some uh, jelly beans floating right now, and they tend to go everywhere. So we've got uh, everything from common candies, and then we've got... Um, Drinks, all our drinks start off with water, and then everything else is dehydrated, so we add water to whatever drinks we're going to make, so be it juice or milk or coffee or tea. And that's the same with our food. A lot of our food comes up to us in a dehydrated form. We add either cold or hot water to it and make the food that we're going to eat. <laughs> and normally we don't do this with our food and our drinks because it does make a mess when we're eating. <laughs> Hi, my name is Aaron Gibbs, and my question is, how do you sleep with all the excitement going on? That's a great question, Aaron. Uh, it is tough to sleep when you first get to space because you, are, you do get pretty excited about um, what's going on, and when you have... Uh, real dynamic events like uh, a spacewalk or something like that. Sometimes it's uh, it's like trying to get to sleep uh, before Christmas morning or something, you know. But um, the the uh, actually sleep is very very uh, is very comfortable in space because you're floating. You don't have any any hot spots or anything uh, like you would when you get laying in your bed. You don't wake up with a sore neck or anything or sore back. Uh, but the thing you have to remember is that everything floats in space, including you when you go to sleep. And so, and so if you want to wake up in the same place you, you went to sleep in, you have to kind of strap yourself down. So we have sleeping bags, and we use a lot of Velcro and some straps to make sure that the sleeping bag doesn't leave our sleeping compartment and uh, we don't leave our sleeping bag as well. So great question. Hi, my name is Amir, and I, my question is, what is the temperature in space in, in the ISS? Well, the temperature in space, um, I, I, I hear, is about uh, plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on where the sun is. I've never experienced those temperatures, except maybe when I've uh, had a pizza in the oven and uh, stuck my hand in there. I wouldn't recommend that, uh, but um, suffice it to say that it is very hot and very cold in space. Um, in fact, uh, when you're out doing a spacewalk, which uh, Doug has done, um, it can get pretty hot outside. Um, the ref the when the sun is hitting you directly, you can actually feel um, some uh, some intense heat. But here on board the International Space Station, it's a it's a very comfortable uh, 72 degrees, uh, pretty pretty much uh, the average room temperature. Sometimes it gets a little cold for uh, uh, people like Shannon and I, uh, but we just put on a sweater um, and uh, we're just fine. So it, it is very comfortable here on board the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Deontay and uh, my question is, are you sometimes afraid when traveling in space? 
Deontay, that's a very good question, and I can only answer for myself that I was not afraid. I was very excited when I was getting ready to launch on the rocket. I wasn't afraid because I have done so much training over the years. I knew exactly what was supposed to happen. I didn't know what it was going to feel like, but I knew what was supposed to happen, and when everything was going according to plan, it was very easy for me to relax and just enjoy the ride up here to the space station. Hi, my name is Brittany, and I wanted to know, what is the International Space Station? Well, Brittany, that's a very good question, and right now it's home for us. But um, it's a big, the best way to think about it, it's a big orbiting laboratory, and it's going around in uh, Earth orbit. It travels around our beautiful planet once every 90 minutes, and um it is about the size of a of a, of a three bedroom two bathroom house the the inside of it and so there's a lot of uh, uh room to roam around but it's built in modules sort of like a habitrail i don't know if you've ever had a a hamster or something like that and have had a habitrail but it's put together about like that and um and we have a lot of room to roam around. And it's also, uh, you can actually see the space station uh, uh, passing over if it's in sunlight and you're in darkness. And so I think you can go to a, uh, to a website, NASA website, and you can put in your location and you can find out when you can see the space station flying over. Great question, Brittany. Hi, my name is Jada Isaac. And my question is, can you talk to your family while you're in space? Well, of course, Jada. We have um, lots of ways uh, to talk to our family in space. Uh, while we're in space, we can email them. Although it's not as uh, as immediately as uh, as you would send an email on Earth, we send an email, and uh, then the ground uh, receives it, and they ship it out to uh, to our family and friends. And then that's the same way we receive them. So there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, we can also call them. They can't call us, but we can call them. And that works uh, in a similar way that we actually um, use the uh, satellites as well as our, our as well as well our antennas on the space station to bounce a signal down to a box on the ground. And that sends out a signal um, uh, to, uh, to the, you know, into the telephone system. And then we also can have a conference with our families uh, using um, the camera system here on board and a private uh, conference with our family. The cameras are at their house and we can communicate through, uh, through video. And then we use, uh, again, our uh, antennas on board uh, to um, bounce a, a voice signal down to them as well so we can hear them and we can also talk to them. So we have a, a variety of ways to communicate with them real time. And we also uh, communicate to them, or they communicate to us through uh, gifts like care packages. When a vehicle arrives, sometimes uh, they're packed with goodies from our family, uh, cards and other notes uh, to let us know that they're thinking about us. Hello, my name is Zoya Whitcomb, and my question is, how long does it take to reveal gravity after you launch? Well, Zoe, I have to tell you, it does not take very long at all. No matter whether you're riding up on the shuttle or the Soyuz rocket like we did, it only takes, if you can believe this, eight and a half minutes to get into space. And after eight and a half minutes, because our engines are very powerful, eight and a half minutes, we are going 17,500 miles an hour around the Earth. Hi, my name is Daniel, and my question is, how long can you be an astronaut? That's a great question, Daniel, and uh, I, I have the very same question because I hope I can be one forever, but it's such a fun job. Uh, but um, uh, like any other job uh, with the uh, demands physically uh, on, on the job, uh, as long as you can stay medically qualified. Uh, we take a lot of medical tests uh, before we uh, get a chance to fly in space, and, and, um, and as long as you can stay uh, medically qualified and stay fit, uh, you can continue to fly as an astronaut. Hi, my name is Eric Morbino, and my question is, what do you have to do to prepare for a landing? Well, Eric, uh, you have to prepare uh, your suits. 
uh, make sure that they are, um, you're still going to fit in your suit because you, you actually grow here in space a little bit. Uh, you make sure that your suit is um, going to pass its leak check. That's very important, too. You, you practice all the procedures, all the steps that you're going to do inside the uh, spaceship to bring it in for a landing. you got to practice that just like you do your homework. We also um, prepare um, our, uh, um, our vehicle to come home, our, our spaceship to come home. It's got to um, change from a spaceship uh, to um, a landing uh, vessel, if you will, and um, there's steps that you have to do to prepare it to do that. So we uh, we prepare in that way. We also have to prepare the station in order to release the vehicle, uh, the spaceship, um, from its latches. And so there's uh, many steps that we do here on board that we also coordinate with our team on the ground in mission control. And then there's a lot of people that are on Earth uh, where we land that are waiting for us. And, and uh, they have many, many steps they have to do to prepare uh, to receive us uh, once we land um, on the Earth. As uh, superintendent, we will prepare to close, but uh, several comments. We would like to thank you for the partnership that is in place with NASA. And this has been a phenomenal opportunity for our students because we continuously impress upon them that they should always dream. However, we want them to understand that those dreams can become reality and that they can travel the same path or similar path that you have traveled and accomplish uh, identical uh, levels of, of quality in terms of their pursuits. So for that, we're extremely grateful and proud in terms of uh, the partnership again. And with that said, I'm going to ask our students as we sign off to give you a great round of applause. And thanks to everyone. Thank you very much. I'll just talk. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Okay, yes. Thank you, Conyers Middle School. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.